morning, everybody. We, uh, I'm actually, I'm gonna do that awkward thing of just giving a couple more minutes, I guess, to let people just jump on in. Morning, Lurley. <coughs> um, yeah, so it's just 11.04. We'll just wait a couple more minutes to give our church family some time to come on in. So while you're watching and waiting for us to start, you can go ahead and click the share button if you normally share um, the service. Will you text my dad? Yeah. Um, go ahead and click share. You could also click one of those buttons there on the bottom. I think it's the per like picture in picture button. And you can invite somebody to watch. So if you have somebody that you were gonna bring to church today or somebody that you normally sit by at church, some anybody that you think uh, would enjoy the service, go ahead and just click that button and you can invite them on in. So we're just waiting a couple more minutes and then we will go ahead and get started. So what does everybody think about this blizzard? The blizzard of 2018, right? I woke up, I, I, I could tell I had slept in so I had figured that we had canceled church. I got up, looked out the window and we can still see the grass. We're out in Millard in West Omaha and we can still see the grass. We didn't get a whole lot of snow, but I do know that Sarpy County got a lot more than us and our church is in South Omaha, so I guess better safe than sorry. But thank God for technology, right? That technology gives us this option where we can all be joining in and still having church. So that's a really great option for us. So as crummy as Facebook is sometimes, right? It's pretty awesome that we're able to do this and still have church. So we have some music going. I actually really love this song by Brooke Frazier. It's the typical old fashioned, you are, I can, I can, I can never remember songs whenever I talk about them. Uh, you are the my breath, whatever. Anyways, we sing it all the time. So hi everybody, if you're just joining in, we're just gonna wait another minute or so and then we will go ahead and start. Brad has a great message prepared. Uh, I should probably turn that down a little bit. Um, if you wanna go ahead and share this message, that would be awesome, if not, we don't care. We don't care if there's literally two people watching or if our whole church family is watching. Hey, Teresa and Bob and Adam. Hey, dude. What's up? We're glad that you guys are all joining in. It looks like we're getting some more people. So I think we could probably go ahead and start. Um, I have been reading a lot of Revelation. Are you think we're good? Yeah. Okay. I have been reading a lot of, is that too loud? I have been reading a lot uh, in the book of Revelation at church just when I get up and talk in between Sit down, babe. talk in between songs for Jess. She really just kind of needs uh, a minute or so sometimes for them to switch over chords or whatever. And I'm always like, if you don't need me to talk, I really don't want to talk. Like, I don't want to have any kind of part of having a microphone or standing up in front of everybody. I really don't. I'm glad just standing and doing things behind the scenes. But anyways, if I'm up there, I'm like, I might as well share something meaningful. So I've really been enjoying sharing verses from Revelation. Last week I shared from Revelation 5, and this morning I will be reading out of Revelation 2. So if you want to open up your Bible, that'd be great. Revelation 2, otherwise I will just go ahead and read. Make sure you guys, as you're watching, just let us know if anything funky happens if it's too quiet too loud or anything hey Paul you guys are in town too bad we didn't have church you guys could have actually joined us this is crazy blizzard weather right all right so Revelation 2 I think I'll start um, where did I say it was gonna start oh, I'll start in uh, verse 2 it says I know all the things you do I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look at how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand lamp stand from its place among the churches. But this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans just as I do. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit from the tree of life 
in the paradise of God. It goes on in verse 8 and it says, Write this letter to the angel of the church of Smyrna. This is the message from the one who is the first and the last, who was dead but is now alive. I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews, but they are not because their synagogue belongs to Satan. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days. But if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. How awesome is that? Verse 11 says, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. I know that you live in the city where Satan has his throne, yet you have remained loyal to me. You refuse to deny me even when Antipas was my faithful witness, was martyred among you there in Satan's city. Just a few more verses. Verse 14 says, but I have a few complaints against you. You tolerate some, some among you whose teaching is that of Balaam, who showed Balak how to trip up the people of Israel. He taught them to sin by eating food offered to idols and by committing sexual sin. In a similar way, you have some Nicolaitans among you who follow the same teaching. Repent of your sin, or I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Anyone who hears Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the manna that has been hidden away in heaven, and I will give to each one a white stone, and on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and pray. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. I just read out of Revelation 2. And for some reason, Revelation 2 has just been really eye-opening and really, really inspiring to me. I mean, how John wrote that out, the visions that we see of heaven, and really truthful, you know, writing to the churches who were living in some terrible sin. It's a great word still for us to live by thousands of years later. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. Thanks again for joining us, and then Brad's going to awkwardly come on in, <laughs> make his appearance and he'll share a message. So thanks for joining us. If you just bow your heads and I'll go ahead and pray. God, what an honor it is to be doing this, to be able to just stand here in our home and have church freely, God. God, we know that lots of places on the earth don't have that privilege, don't have that right. So God, we don't take this for granted. God, just even standing here and just talking to you, God, that's so sacred and we take that alone for granted. We Sometimes we go all day or days and don't even think about talking to you, don't even think about consulting you. So God, forgive us for that, just standing here knowing that the God who created the universe is literally just listening to my words. It's just so unbelievable. The God that created the snowflakes, each and every individual snowflake different. The God that knows our hairs on our head. The God who created molecules and oxygen and nitrogen and, and planets and stars and, and galaxies. And the God who created our DNA, each of us different, each of us with our own separate DNA, our own separate fingerprints. God, you're just so awesome. Forgive us for taking you for granted. Forgive us for taking your presence for granted. So God, as we just have this moment in our home of church and as we invite others into our home, our virtual home, God, we pray that you just speak to people today. Maybe there's people who haven't stepped foot into church in months or perhaps years or decades. So God, this is a really neat moment where we can bring church to them. So God, I pray that Brad's message, I know it's gonna be great, and God, we pray that that can really penetrate somebody's heart today, even if it's just one person, even if it's just mine, God. God, we know that you've got big plans, and we trust in you, and we thank you. Thank you for being here. Bless every person that's watching in their own home, 
God, may they just really be truly be surrounded by your presence. Let them really truly encounter you and tangibly feel your presence in their home or wherever they're watching from, maybe at work or in their car, in their bed. So God, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Here's the awkward moment of inviting Brad on in. <laughs> I actually, hey guys, I actually wanted to come up from up from underneath, uh, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to mess up the anointing. Uh, no, this is good, babe. Hey, go ahead. You put that radio, that music back on. Hey, at least in the, in the maybe in the background. Um, I uh, so yesterday, uh, several months ago, I taught. Uh, I, I I preached a message about. Um, and I've been alluding to this a lot about how we find victory in our worship time and how we overcome our enemies. Remember, um, Jehoshaphat, he, re he uh, um, required to resolve of the Lord when he knew that there was three vast armies coming after him. And you remember that message, right? Well, um, so I do that a lot. Whenever there's an issue that I need to address, before I address it, um, I go into not only prayer but to worship. So... When I knew the storm was coming, that's exactly what I did yesterday. I went into prayer and worship to prevent us from having church. And I woke up this morning and I was I was bummed because, God, we're not having church. I mean, I thought I went and resolved to inquire of the Lord. And lo and behold, we're having church right now. And, and I was listening to Ashley as I was sweeping the floor. My OCD, uh, that's the benefit of being at home. I can clean when I'm off, when I'm off the screen. Um, but... Uh, she said, there's some people that haven't been, haven't been to church in months or years. Welcome. Welcome to church. Facebook and social media has allowed us to do this, so thank you for coming to church this morning. Um, I actually, I'm actually completely dressed. Um, I actually have full-on clothes, and I, I shaved, and I put on deodorant. I didn't put on cologne, because I'm not going to waste that uh, for this. It's too much money. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for being a part of what we're doing. And I have a message for you. Some of you guys have maybe heard this message before, but I need to preach it again because I have been waiting for an opportunity to bring this message again. We forget, here's the thing, I, I, I preach the messages and I forget what the messages are. And I promise you, you some, of you, some of you have never heard this message. This was the very first message that I brought um, when we started the nine o'clock service. And I believe it was a timely message for that, for that particular time. And some of you were not coming to, I can see you guys up on my Facebook feed right now. Some of you guys weren't coming to church then. And I've been waiting for an opportunity to preach this again. I actually have my message. You know, we're in the middle of our management series. And um, we're in the, the, uh, the middle of our management series. And I'm going to bring that next week. But I don't want to waste it now. You know what I'm saying? I want to keep that at the church. So I knew exactly what to bring this morning. I'm going to get a drink of my water while I do that. Open up your books to, or your Bibles or your phones. You're probably on your phones. If you don't have that, I'm going to read it. But uh, Genesis chapter 26, verse 6. If you have your Bible, Genesis 26, verse 6. Um, I don't know if you guys are watching this on your phone, your computers. But if you can get to it, Genesis um, 26, verse 6. It's going to be a miracle if we can make it through the entire uh, um, church service. And not have any distractions uh, from our kids, but um, they're playing Fortnite right now, so I think we're, we'll be good for five hours. Genesis uh, 26, verse 6. Now, I can't hear your amens, um, but I can see them, so uh, type them. Genesis 26, verse 6. Now, there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar, um, time out there. The Philistines were Isaac's enemies. There's a famine in the land and uh, Isaac thought, well, I'm going to have to go talk to the king of my enemies because there's a famine in the land and I don't know what to do. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm losing my resources. I don't have food. I don't have drink. I need to go do something. But the Bible says, verse 2, but the Lord appeared to Isaac. The Lord appeared to Isaac. He said, don't go down to Egypt. I don't care what the king's going to tell you. I know God always trumps the king. I know what, I don't care what the, what the king is going to tell you. I don't care what your boss is going to tell you. I don't care about the advice that your parents are going to give you. I don't care what the advice that your friends are going to give you. I don't care what people are going to tell you on Facebook. The fact of the matter is, what I tell you is what needs to happen. 
God said, listen, don't go down. Don't go down to Egypt. He said, matter of fact, I want you to stay right here. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Verse 2, live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you there. Stay here in this land, and I will be with you there. God told Isaac, he said, don't go down to Egypt. Stay in the land where I tell you. And what is the land that I tell you? The land that I tell you is this land, a land that's in famine. I've, I've set out, and my goal, babe, you can turn that down a little bit more. My goal is, is, is try to get people to understand my God, to, to, to know who my God is. People have this their own perception and, and their own reality of what their God is. And um, sometimes it's not like my God. They think God is an angry God. They think God is a mean God. They think God is a, an unjust God and an unfair God. And I'm trying to get you guys to understand that he's not that way. He is a just God. He is a fair God. But it's hard for me to say that and then read this passage about a man living in a famine, going to the king to find out, hey, what do I need to do? We're in a famine. Where do you advise me to go? What should I do? But yet God steps in and says, no, stay in the famine. That's really hard for me to talk about how God is a fair God and God is a just God when he's telling you to live in a land where you're not being satisfied. Live in a land that's in famine. Live in a land where you're running out of resources. You're running out of hope. You don't know what the future brings. And yet God steps in and says, stay where you are. I've been there before. I'm sure some of you have been there before. You're in a season of your life where you don't want God. I mean, I mean, you're in a season of your life where you don't want to stay there anymore. You'd give anything to wake up and just, I remember... When Ashley and I went through our, our separation, I remember often just waking up and, and realizing, gosh, it wasn't a dream. Well, it wasn't a nightmare. I wish I could escape this. I remember it was, a, I was a very, it was a very vulnerable feeling because I couldn't escape what I was in. For the first time in my life, I had absolutely no control. There was no solution to my problem. I couldn't just snap my fingers or, or go work hard or, or go do this, that, and the other to solve my problems. I was trapped in there. Sometimes God puts us in a season and puts us in a land where it's dying. But he says, I want you to stay there. I want you to stay there. Let's continue to read. Uh, verse 3, for to you and your descendants, he said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to bless you. Stay in this land. For to you and your descendants, I will give you all of these lands. People are leaving these lands. I'm going to give you all of these lands, and I will confirm my oath I swore to your father Abraham. Listen, we I'm getting off my I'm getting off track a little bit. Stay in the land that God told you, because in that land is where God is going to reveal his oath. He's gonna He's gonna bring about his promises. He says, I'm gonna confirm my oath. I'm gonna bring about my promises in this land, in this season. If you want to leave because you're unhappy, because you're unfulfilled, because you're afraid, listen, you could do whatever you want to. You've got free will. But he said, if Isaac, if you would stay in this land that I told you, when everybody else is leaving, everybody else is going to Egypt, if you would stay here, I know you don't want to be here, but if you would stay here, I will confirm my oath to you. I will bring about my promises. Some people have never seen the promises of God because you're not staying where God has told you to stay long enough for him to confirm his oath. You're running before the promises even show up. That's good. Give me an amen. Someone type an amen. You're not seeing the promises of God because you're hightailing it and you're leaving and you're running off to Egypt. You're following the crowd. You're leaving. But he said, I wish, I, I wish you would just stay right here so I can bring about my promises so that I can confirm the oath that I swore to your, your father Abraham. Verse 4, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. I will give them all of these lands, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Because, Ab because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, my instructions, remaining obedient to me, so Isaac stayed in Gerar. That word Gerar is funny. Not only is he staying in the land uh, of famine, but he's staying in Gerar, and that word gerar means to drag off roughly or to chew up. So look at this, for example. Okay, so let, let's just step back and just kind of see what's happening. Everybody's leaving and they're going to Egypt. Everybody wants to get away. Everybody wants to run because they're in, a, they're in a season and they're in a time of their life that they're in a famine, right? 
things are dying, they're unsatisfied, they're not fulfilled, they're, they're nervous about their future, they don't know what's going to come the next day, but yet God says, I want you to stay there, stay in that famine. But not only is it a land of famine, but it, the land named Gerar means to drag off roughly or chew up. So God says, stay in the land that's in famine. Yes, that is the land that drags off roughly or chews up its people. Stay there. And not only that, but Isaac is surrounded by the Philistines who are his enemies. So God, this loving and gracious God says, stay in the land that's in famine. Stay in the land that chews up its inhabitants. Stay in the land where you're surrounded by your enemies. Stay uncomfortable. Stay here. Because this is where I'm going to bless you. When everybody else is running off to Egypt, I want you to stay here. Stay in this season. Stay in this land. God says, stay in this land, the land that's in famine. And if you do what I'm asking you to do, if you remain obedient to me, I will bless you. This is something I've said all along, and I've been saying this for years. I know that sometimes God calls us to strange areas in our life. But if that's where God is, that's still the best place to be. Sometimes God says, come out and leave the trunk of the tree and come to the branch. Even though that's the scariest place to be. That's where you're the most vulnerable. If that's where God is, that is the best place to be. Several times in my life, God has put me in a position that I would never want to be in. God's put me in this and it put me in seasons and in lands where I would give anything not to be there. But because God is there, that is still the best place to be. I remember when I was working on this message. As a matter of fact, I, I ran through my notes before I got behind this. I'm always going to be prepared. And I Googled it again. I remember when I was working on this message, I Googled where God is is the best place and assuming that it would say to be. But when I Googled it, it says, where God is, is the best place to farm. Where God is, is the best place to plant your seed. Where God is, is the best place to harvest. I was like, That's incredible. Because go to verse 12. Listen, go to verse 12. It says, verse 12, Isaac stayed and Isaac planted crops in that land. Isaac stayed in the land of famine. He stayed in the land of Gerar where it chews up its people. He stayed surrounded by his people. He stayed where God wanted him to stay and he planted crops. He farmed in that land. What do we do when we're in a land of famine? We stay put. We answer. We, we do what God's called us to do. We stay there and we plant and we farm. Continue to read in verse 12. And he, Isaac planted crop in that land, and in the same year, he reaped a 100-fold blessing because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. So he was wealthy, but then it, became, but it grew for him to become very wealthy. He had so many flocks and so many herds and so many servants that the Philistines envied him. If you stay where God, if, if hmm, how do I say this? If God is always meeting your expectation, he would never have the opportunity to exceed them. That's good. Ty, give me, give me a heart on that. Give me a thumbs up. If God is always meeting your expectations, he would never have the opportunity to exceed your expectations. If you want to impress other people, matter of fact, if you even want to impress your enemies, stay where God has told you to stay. He said, stay here in this land, farm in this land. Everybody's leaving it. I know that you want to leave. Listen to what I'm telling you to do. Stay here. And not only will I meet your expectations, but I will, I will surpass your expectations. I'll give you wealth upon wealth upon wealth. And not only will people see what I'm doing in your life, but even your enemies are going to envy you. That's exactly what happened. Even the Philistines, in the, they, they were his enemies. But they said, there's something about Isaac. What is Isaac doing that we're not doing? They, they envied him. Leaving the famine in Gerar and going to Egypt was the logical thing to do. Egypt was a land of wealth. Egypt was blessed. Uh, there, uh, the, the Nile River was kind of running through or running near Egypt. And it, wasn't, it, uh, it, it was really kind of the place to go if you were experiencing a famine. But also, in that land of Egypt, uh, um, it, says, it says they worshipped many gods and none of them were the real gods. So even though Egypt gave these people what they needed, the, the food and the drink, God wasn't at Egypt. There were gods in Egypt, but there were lowercase g gods. They weren't the real gods of Egypt. Why wasn't the real god of Egypt, uh, why wasn't the real god in Egypt? Because the real god was back in the famine. 
Sometimes the real God isn't found in the supply. He's found in the shortage. And I want to take it a step further and say, I don't think God is ever found in the supply. I think God is always found in the shortage. I have found that in my shortage, in my shortcomings, I find God there. And it's what God does in the shortage that gets me to experience the supply. People are running off to Egypt and they're fighting food and they're fighting drink, but they're not fighting the real God. Why? Because he's not in the supply. He's back over here in the shortage. He's in the famine. Go back to the famine if you want to experience God. Because in the, when we are experiencing a season of famine, what do we do? Rarely do we, rarely do people consult God and seek God when they're experiencing the supply and the abundance. When they're experiencing the surplus, rarely do we need God. But I'm telling you, my Facebook feed, my Facebook messenger is, is blown up with people that are experiencing the famine and they're experiencing the, the short supply. They're experiencing the shortage. Then all of a sudden they said, I need God. When people are in the supply and they're experiencing the surplus, they don't need God because all of their needs are met. You're not going to find God in the supply. You're going to find him in the shortage. But what he does in the shortage, just as he did Isaac, Isaac went back and experienced God in the, in the shortage, stayed there in the famine. And God said, because you are with me in the shortage, I'm not going to keep you in the shortage any longer. I'm going to give you wealth upon wealth upon wealth. And matter of fact, your friends and your enemies are always going to envy you. They're going to envy you because of what I've done in the shortage. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 26, it says, For all gods of the people, for all lowercase g gods, for all gods of the people are idols. What are idols? They're good-for-nothing gods. They have absolutely no value. They're worthless. God is saying to Isaac, no, don't go to Egypt. Stay, stay here in Gerar. I know it's not where you want to be, but stay where I am. I know that Egypt seems to be a better place for some people. I know that from afar, Egypt looks like, you know, it's the place to be. The glitz and the glamour and all the smoke and all the lights. But the fact is, is I'm not in Egypt. They have, they have gods in Egypt, but they're gods of no value. The God of real value is over here in the famine over here in the short supply. Hmm. In Isaac's case, the price was staying. There's a, a, a Warren Buffett, you know Warren Buffett, he said something really good. He said, price is what you pay and value is what you get. Price is what you pay and value is what you get. In Isaac's case, the price was staying where God told him to stay. And I'm sure it was a, it was a hard price. I'm sure that was a hard decision for, for Isaac to make. The price was staying in the Gerar. The price was staying in the land of famine. The price was staying in the land of a shortage. But the value was that God blessed him a hundredfold there. If you let God, if you remain obedient, if you lend your ear to God, God will keep you invested in the land and in the things and in the places and in the people that produce. God said, go to Egypt if you want. Everybody's going to Egypt if you want. But they're going to find that they, they too are not going to experience me over there. But if you listen to me, Isaac, I'm going to keep you here. I'm going to get you invested in Gerar. I'm going to get you planting here in Gerar. I'm going to keep you invested here in this area, in the area that I am. Why? Because it's in this area that's going to produce God, if you listen to God, I know that you kind of want to run off and do your own thing. But if you listen to God, God will keep you invested in the people, in the places, in the seasons, and in the lands that will produce for you. You better believe that if Isaac left Gerar and left the famine and went to Egypt, he would never have produced the hundredfold blessing. But he kept his ear to God and God said, stay here. And because he stayed there, he got to experience the hundredfold blessing. So what do you do when you're in a famine? I taught in my message what, do you, what to do in a famine. So what do you do when you're in a famine? You sow in a famine. When everybody else is going to Egypt, you stay in the famine. You stay in the shortage and you stay there and you plant. In other words, you stay in the famine and you remain obedient. I know, you, I know that you're unhappy with where you are. And you'd give anything to leave Gerar and go to Egypt. You'd give anything to leave the shortage and go to the supply, the surplus. I understand. But God has got you there. So what do you do while you're there? You stay there and you stay obedient. Okay, God, I'm here. What do you want me to do? 
I listen, I know that there's a purpose for my pain. I know I'm here for a reason. And I know that you're not going to take me from this level to the next level until I'm qualified to go to the next level. I'm here for a season. So what do you want me to do while I'm here? I want you to be obedient. I want you to plant. I want you to farm. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. So what do you do when you're in a famine? You stay, you plant, you sow, and you remain obedient. When I was working on this whole nine o'clock thing, well, back in June, right? We started in June, June, of June, right? Yeah. When we were working on this, I was mowing my backyard, and, I, and I, I've shared this with you guys before. But I was mowing my backyard, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, when you go into this new season of your life, when you start doing this, he said, I want you to sow for the growth. Isaac stayed back in, in the famine, and God said, start sowing, start planting, and he did, and he grew, and a hundredfold, and God told me, he said, listen, when you, when, when you go back, when you start this church, the South Omaha Church of God, don't look on, don't look what's going on around you. Don't look at the people coming and going. Don't look at the people running off to Egypt. I want you to go back to the South Omaha Church of God. I want you to stay at the South Omaha Church of God right there, 1707 J Street. That's my plug. Right there in the middle of South Omaha, small church, small bathrooms. I want you to stay there in the, in Gerar, stay in the shortage, and I want you to plant. And he, he told me, he said, I want you to, he goes, you could, you could fertilize the new and fertilize, I'm sorry, you can fertilize what you have. He said, but I want you to go back and I want you to sow for the new. I want you to be thinking about the new. I want you to reach the new people and reach the, you know, the, 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 the new marriages and the new believers and the, the people that are newly uh, uh, freed from addiction. I, I want you to go do everything for the new. And the new scares people because the new brings change. And I think a lot of people are afraid of that. And I, I a lot of you guys know that we took over, you know, we did the 9 o'clock service, but then we took over kind of like the lead, the lead pastorship of the 11 o'clock service. And I know that that scares a lot of people or makes a lot of people nervous because Ashley and I and our team, we're the new. And I think a lot of people think, well, they're going to bring in the new and it's going to change so much. Well, my response to that is, you're right. You're right. It's time for change. It's time for growth. The Lord told me, stay. Listen, and I, I'm going to move on. But, but prior to, to Ashley and I and Sean and Jesse and our team, prior to uh, us starting the, the 9 o'clock service, several times I tried to leave Gerar and try to go to Egypt. Several times I tried to, went to go out to West Omaha and find churches and find buildings to let, us, to let us do what we're doing right now. Several times I went knocking on doors. I remember I walked out of my office one time and... Um, in the, in the development that we're in, the, the, uh, the Vacantes, the Vacanti Real Estates, I'm sure a lot of you guys know them. Um, ironically, I think they actually go to uh, City Light Church. Anyways, he came out and I said, man, listen, do you got a property that, that you just need to put somebody in there? I mean, do you have a building or something that I could just, you can just go put somebody in there? Uh, give us an opportunity. Several times I was trying to leave Egypt and I'm sorry, leave Gerar and go to Egypt. But God said, no, 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 stay here. Stay in the shortage. Stay in South Omaha. Stay where you are and plant and plant for the new and plant for the growth. That is where you're going to experience the hundredfold. Just because there's a famine, don't walk away from what God has given you. God told Isaac, he said, stay where you are. This is your land. I'm going to give it to you. Just because it's not producing for you right now doesn't mean that it won't. You need to stay where you are. Many of you guys are in a famine right now. You're, you're in a season. I got I to gotta flip this off here. I don't think it. Many of you guys are in a season right now where you don't want to be. You would give anything to leave that. But God is telling you, stay where you are. Don't walk away from what I've given you. I know it's a season that you don't want to be in. I know it's a time that you don't want to be in, but stay where you are. And that's where I'm going to bless you. If you go back and read the story of uh, Naomi in, uh, in the book of Ruth, the Bible says that she packed up and she left Bethlehem because there's, there's a famine. There's a famine. The thing is that Bethlehem means the house of bread. So she literally left the house of bread. She left Bethlehem because there's a famine. She packed up and she went to Moab. She left the house of bread in search of bread, which I kind of thought was ironic. Well, here's the thing. When she got to Moab, she heard that there was bread back in Bethlehem. But while, uh, but, but, uh, um, while she was in Moab, her husband and two of her boys died. 
The thing is that she left the famine, and I perhaps she should have stayed in the famine, but she left the famine in search of something greater. She literally traded three funerals for one famine. She left the famine. She left, she left perhaps where she should have stayed. I don't want to be here. It's icky over here. I'm nervous over here. I'm scared over here. I don't like the, the feelings I get living in, in this famine. I don't like this season. I don't like what's happening here right now. I'm going to pack up, and I'm going to leave. And she left, and while she was gone, perhaps she should not have done that, because while she was gone, she experienced the death of her husband and her children. Stay where you are. I know you don't want to be there. I know you'd give anything to leave where you're at right now, but God is saying, stay where you are. That is where I'm going to bless you. When everybody else is leaving, stay. Listen to me. Listen to me, and that's where I'm going to believe you. Don't walk away from what I'm giving you. I know it's not producing for you right now, Isaac. I know I know it's in a famine, but if you stay and if you are are obedient to me and if you sow and if you plant I'm telling you I will give you the promises there are times when we all go through lenious it's a hard word for me to say there's a time that we all go through shortage but but even matter of fact I, even in our callings it's funny because there are times when God calls us to go do things and right when he calls us to go do things, we step into that season of the calling, and all of a sudden we face a, we face a famine. We're in the middle of a short supply. And when that happens, we're so quick to jump ship and leave that land. But God says, stay in that land. He says, I want you to go marry in that land. I want you to go do business in that land. I want you to be fruitful and multiply in that land. Don't, don't, listen, do you know what I've told you? I've told you to stay there. Both of my parents and even my grandparents have always kind of taught this idea. If God is silent to you, if God is not being active, and, and if you're having a hard time and, and hearing the voice of God, my mom says, just hang on to, to, the, to the last thing he's told you. My, my grandpa, uh, my papa who built our church, he said, listen, just tie a note at the end, uh, tie a, a, ro a, a knot at the end of the rope and hold on to the last thing that God told you. My dad took it a step further and he said, just tie that rope around you and hold on hold on to the last thing that God told you. Listen, I know that that season and that land that you're in is not producing, but, but listen to what I'm telling you. Stay there. Don't leave. I know it doesn't look good, but don't leave. Stay there and plant. You need to understand that I've been teaching this a lot lately. You need to understand that all things, all the things that you need for you to be successful and for you to experience wealth and poverty and success and happiness and joy and fulfillment, all the things that you need to make that happen, God has already given it to you, but it's in that land. I, God told Isaac, listen, I've given you these things. I'm in, in that land. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the promises that I made to your father. I'm going to confirm my oath. I'm going to give you all of these things. I'm going to give you your wealth. I'm going to give you your provisions. I'm going to give you fulfillment. I'm going to give you joys. I'm going to give you all of these things. But all of these things are found in that land. The land that you guys don't want to stay in. The land that makes you feel uncomfortable. Stay in that land. And in that land, I'm going to confirm my oath. Don't run away. You can't have the 100 full blessing and you can't, you cannot experience the 100 full blessing unless you make it through the famine in that land. I'm kind of curious. I'm, I'm kind of looking at the people that are watching. I'm kind of curious to what is that land in your life? What is it? Maybe it's a poor marriage right now. Maybe it's a career choice that you don't know, but you like, listen, man, I'm almost positive. I thought God told me to go do this. And now I'm kind of facing the shortage. Maybe, maybe you're regretting having children. Maybe you're just regretting choices that you've made, but you, but you just really believe that that was the right choice for you to make. Well, if that really was the right choice for you to make, and if you really believe that God led you to, to that area, but now you're facing a shortage and you're facing a famine, my advice to you is you've got to make it through that famine if you're going to experience the hundredfold blessing. God will use famine to do things in your life that feasting cannot do. I'm going to say that again. You got to write that down. God will use a famine. God, God did a, God used a famine in Isaac's life to do something that a supply and a surplus could never do. God brought Isaac wealth upon wealth in the famine. God, Isaac was never going to experience the wealth upon wealth in Egypt. He said in famine, God will use a famine to do things in your life that the feasting cannot do. God will use the shortage to do things in your life that the supply cannot do. The Bible said that Jesus was a root out of dry ground. 
He was not expected to come. He was a root out of dry ground. Listen, I wrote these down. Um, Jesus found Lazarus on the fourth day when he was smelly and he was decaying. He found David on the backside of a desert. He found Moses in the desert. He found Job in the trial. He found the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. He found Daniel in the lion's den. He found Elisha trying to kill himself. He found Jeremiah in a pit, Peter in a prison, and Paul in a storm. God says, I use famines. I use shortages. I use sufferings for my glory. And if I got you in one right now, don't run away. Don't pack your bags and leave. Stay. You've not been buried. I've planted you there. There's a difference. Stay there. Sow into that land. Don't leave that land. I'm going to show you my glory in the suffering, in the shortage. Don't run off to Egypt. I know everybody else is. I know everybody else is trying to convince you, but stay there. Because that's where I will bless you. That's where I will confirm my oath. My gosh. Here's my close. The only place that you can get the hundredfold blessing is in the land that God tells you. I, I want a big church. Because I want to reach as many people as I possibly can. Because I believe I have something that people, I have a message to share with people that that they need to hear. And if I could kind of paint my own picture, my picture would look differently than what it is right now. I remember when I was a young kid, I was probably, I, I want to say 16. I don't even think I was 16. I bet you I was in my, no, I, I know I wasn't 16. This was back when my dad was doing the youth group. Um, guys, if you're watching, Adam would Todd, um, Oh my gosh, how old? We were young enough to afterwards, we'd go to Hardee's in Bellevue, remember on Fort Crook Road and jump in the balls. So I was pretty young. But um, I was praying over in the, in the corner. And um, I was praying over in the corner. And dad came up behind me and he prayed for me. And, and I, I, I'll never forget this prayer. And I don't remember a lot of prayers, but I'll never forget this prayer. And I believe it was a prophetic message. He said, um, he said, you think you've got, your oh no, listen, I was older. I was in high school. I remember when I was in high school. He said, I know you think you've got your life all figured out and you know what you want and you know your expectations. But he begins to tell me, he said, but listen, if you just trust God, God will do things in your life that you've never thought of. God will take you to levels and get you to experience things that you've never been able, been able to experience. That's what God will do. So you got, you got everything planned out, but God's going to take you to seasons and to lands that you, listen, I promise you this, I never wanted God to take me to a famine, but I've been in many of famines of my life. When I, when I was going to start my church, ideally, let's, let's just be raw and real and transparent. If I want to start a church, I'm probably not going to start it in a small church in South Omaha. But God says, no, 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 no. That's when everybody is leaving South Omaha, when everybody is leaving and they're going to the smoke and the lights and they're going to all of these things, Brad, I want you to go back and I want you to stay in the famine. I want you to stay in the shortage. I want you to stay where everybody else is leaving. And that is where I'm going to bless you. The only place that you can get a hundredfold blessing is if you stay in the area, in the season, and in the, in, and in the land that God has told you to stay in. I did, Isaac did not sow into what he wished it was. Isaac didn't sow it into what he wanted it to be. Isaac sowed in what it was. Isaac sowed in the famine. Could you imagine if people saw Isaac out there sowing in the famine? Isaac didn't sow into what he wanted it to be. Isaac didn't sow into what he wished it was. Isaac went out and he sowed and he farmed in what it was. He farmed in a famine, in a less desirable land, in a harsh environment, in unfavorable conditions. That just speaks to the, to the evidence and to the proof that when God is in it, there is no limit. I can only imagine what people thought when they saw Isaac out there throwing down seed and, and, and scraping, raking the ground. <laughs> it's a famine, my friend. There's no life there, Isaac. And I would imagine that Isaac just kind of kept on going along thinking, listen, I look like a fool, but God told me to stay here. God told me to farm here. God told me to be fruitful and multiply. I know what's in this ground. I know what God has told me. I am not going to leave. And he just kept on working. He kept on, he kept on raking. He kept on shoveling. I, I believe in God. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. He told me that in this land of famine that he's going to confirm the oath. I believe what God has told me to do. Listen, you know what God has told you told you to do. You know what God has put into your heart. You know the promises of God. 
My advice to you and my encouragement to you today is don't leave the land that God has told you to go back to. Stay where you are. I was thinking about this earlier today, and I don't know who's watching now, and I can't really tell, but I'll go back and see. There's a particular person that I really wanted to hear this, um, uh, hear this message today. You know who you are, and you're having a really hard time in your relationship with your spouse, and you don't know what to do. I believe that this message was for you. I don't know what the answer is for you either. But if I can encourage you today, I'm going to tell you to stay where you are. Don't sit. Don't soak. Get to work. Farm. Plant. Sow. Many of you guys, I'm looking here. Some of you guys are in seasons right now. And all you want to do is just sit and soak. That's not what we do. We're called to do more than that. I want you to be fruitful and I want you to multiply. Don't sit and don't soak and don't waste away. I know that you're in a time and then you're in a season that you don't want to be right now. But stay here because that's what I'm telling you to do. And while you're here, get to work. Sow and farm in the famine. It's a bold move. It's, it's, a, move, it's a move out of obedience and faith. And when you move out of, out of obedience and faith, we get to experience the promises of God. Let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, I love you so much and I thank you for this opportunity that you've given us. Thank you for technology. I believe that you're up to something today. I prayed last night, Lord God, that we may have church and I believe that we have church. I can fill you in my house. The same God that goes to South Omaha, the same God that goes to a church in, in Carter Lake, Iowa, the same God that's, a, that's all across the state, and all across the nation, all across the world is the same God that's in this house today. God, I believe that there are several people that would just give anything to leave where they are right now because they're so unsatisfied, they're unfulfilled, there's no joy, they're nervous, they're in a spiritual famine. But I believe that you're telling us to stay where we are and get to work. Work and, and serve out of obedience and trust and faith in you. We will never get to experience the hundredfold blessing if we pack up our bags and leave. I believe that you are a God of the shortage. That's where you operate. It's what you do in the shortage that gets, to us, that gets us to experience the supply. Every single week, if you are a member of our church, you know we do this. I will never close one service without giving you guys an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ in your heart. And I want you to know that you can find Jesus anywhere and you can have him come into your heart anywhere and it doesn't have to be at the altar at a church. You can find Jesus right there on your couch, in your pajamas, drinking your coffee and eating your donuts. If that's you, if you're saying that I need this, that I feel like I'm just blah, I feel like I have no hope, I feel like I have no joy, I feel like I've just been in a season of famine forever, I'm going to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. And that's the, that's the first start, man. When you get that, the Bible says you become a new creation. You start to see things in, in a different light. You, you're elevated. You become blessed. Blessings elevate us. You'll start, to walk, you'll start to walk on a different level. If that's you, if you're saying that I need to come out of the shortage and start to experience the surplus, if that's you, I just raise your hand. I can't see it, but just raise your hand to God. Put up both hands to God. Get on your knees. And repeat this prayer after me. Jesus Christ, I need you. I cannot do it without you. I've been in the famine too long. I don't even know what the surplus looks like. I've been, in the, I've been living in the shortage for way too long. But I know that in order for me to come from the shortage to the supply, the first thing that I've got to do is I've got to get you active in my life. And so right now, I repent. I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Jesus Christ, will you come into my heart and save me right now, right now, and say these words, I now profess you as my Lord and my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. So this was a lot of fun. Where's my phone, babe? You get my phone? Yeah. I want to, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you guys to do something. Uh, and then we'll just have Ashley come in and close. There is a, um, I want to give you guys, I, hear my heart. 
I want to give you guys an opportunity to give if you want to. If you don't want to, whatever. We'll talk about that at another time. We'll come. We'll talk about this in church next week. But I know who my my I, Lori. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at you. Uh, I know a, a lot of people support our ministry uh, through the Tithely app, and I have it here. I just wanted to show you. I don't know if you can really see that. Oh, too good. Probably not. See Tithely. That's the app. You're able to download that app. And, and uh, you're able to download that app and just kind of put in your information and it makes giving easy. If you want to support this ministry, go ahead. If you don't, whatever. God, listen, I've, I've been preaching this a lot lately. If this is a church that God desires, he's going to keep these doors open and keep us active and, and keep us broadcasting regardless. But if you want a blessing, lately we've been talking about in Malachi chapter 3, starting at verse 6, going through like verse 10. He said, bring your tithe into the storehouse. And when you do that, he said, I'm going to open up the floodgates of heaven and I will bless you so much that you will not be able to contain it. You're going to start dropping blessings everywhere you go. I remember when, when uh, Ashley and I, um, when and, uh, when we were given, when she was giving birth to Cameron, we were at Outback in uh, in Bellevue, and her water broke at Outback in Bellevue, and uh, it's just a great story. And we're literally running to the car to, to drive to the hospital, and as she was running to the car, she was making uh, footprints. Uh, her water broke, so she's leaving uh, footprints of her flip flops, you know, water prints as throughout the store of Outback and uh, to the car. I'm telling you, the God said, "Listen, bring your tithe into the storehouse, and when you do, I'm going to bless you with so much. I'm going to flood you with blessings." Blessings that everywhere you go, you're going to leave evidence that where you used to be. Everywhere you go, you're going to be leaving footprints of my blessing. I'm telling you, man, that's I want people to be able to walk in my footsteps and be blessed. I want people people to be walking behind me and say, I don't know much about that guy, but I can see the footprint, the footprints of blessings all over the floor. There's something about that guy. And some of you are such grateful uh, supporters of us, and a lot of you already give on that Tithely app. But if you want to give this morning, I want to encourage you to do that, and I know that God will bless you. Thank you so much for coming to church today. Um, Ashley has a few things. Remind them about Life Group on Wednesday. Yeah, we have just a couple more weeks of Life Group left. You guys, isn't it funny? We got dressed for church. I'm like a news <laughs> anchor. I have shorts on underneath this. And, no, just... and Brad decided to wear a teal shirt with our teal wall, so no. we got a little bit of a floating head. But anyways, yeah. No, we because have... this home, um, this is a shirt that Ashley said I can never wear to church. It's not a Sunday morning shirt, but know. it is at home. Anyways, we have just a few more weeks of life group left. We do that from our home in our living room. So uh, if you've never been, go ahead and just shoot us a message, and we will send you our address. Kids are welcome. It's a really chill time. It's, I, I mean, more than anything, we kind of had a plan in the beginning. More than anything, what we've been noticing is it's we are all really just craving being together. And I I really have been seeing relationships within the people that have been coming really, really grow and really yeah. come, yeah. like people are really, truly coming to love one another. And that, that's always been our goal. You know, and my dad said it in the comments up above, that's always been our goal is we don't want to just invite you to come to church. I mean, we do that every week. And that's not what it's about. It's Development. Not, it's not about growing a church. We are happy. We have said this from the yeah. very beginning. We are so happy to do church with just our children Sean and Jesse's kids, Adam and uh, Kim's kids, we are beyond happy to do that. But obviously, we want to get the word out. We want to get the gospel out. So we've been noticing through Life Group how people's relationships have really been growing. And like I said last night in our other live video, um, my, our friend Mickey and my friend Jamie, who I met at the abortion clinic, their relationship has really grown and flourished. In fact, she came to our Thanksgiving lunch at church, and I knew she wasn't going to sit by me. I knew she was going to sit by Mickey. And I said, oh, great, go ahead and go sit by your new friend. That's good. But I was so grateful and so thankful that she's, I mean, that's what it's all about. That's yeah. what it's all about is us all becoming not just a church family, but really, truly a family where we're sharing and caring. When it's still Women United's uh, quote or whatever, sharing, caring, and and bearing, bearing one, one yeah, another's yeah, burdens, yeah. right? Isn't that a family that when you're hurting, I'm hurting? Yeah. And that when you're rejoicing, I'm rejoicing. And then when we're rejoicing, you're rejoicing with us. And, and if you're in need, let us know. And we want to give to you. And right. if we're ever in need, I, I would hope that you would do the same for us. And that's really what we're doing is not just building a church building, but really building a church family. So we've you know, been noticing that in Life Group that that's really been happening. Uh, so I would imagine that all pastors do this for their congregation. Um, but I want you to understand that I'm a pastor who literally prays yeah. for each and every one of you. Um, this is my home. And I, you, you know that I, I do a lot of preparation for my, my messages in my home. And then downstairs, God has blessed us with a, with a great home that's perfect. He gives me these little nooks that I, I can go in and pray. And every morning I pray, and I pray for you guys. And, I, um, and when I do, 
kind of sounds bizarre, but I'm able to close my eyes and picture every single one of you. And I'm able to walk through like this virtual church in my head and, and like, uh, Kevin, I know where you sit. Mm -hmm. Jordan, I know where you sit. You know, uh, uh, Lori, I, I know where to, uh, I know where to pray for you. Just put my hand over, you know, over my Facebook page. You know, I can, I, uh, I can pray for Shannon and Adam and Todd and, and, and Sean and Jesse. I know. And I, I, I visualize it and I begin to pray for everybody. And so I just think it's important that you know that I, as your leader and as your pastor, I really do pray for all of you guys. And sometimes God gives me a very unique, special prayer for you. Um, and sometimes I don't. And sometimes I just say, God, just do God things in their life. You know what they need. So we just love you so much. Thank you for the great support. This is such a fun thing that this gives me ideas. I'm, maybe this is something that we could do most often. I never want to exchange what we do on Sunday mornings with this. Um, Ooh, maybe, but, but, this, maybe this can be a Sunday night. That's, what, that's we don't exactly have, what I thought. We don't have Sunday evening churches anymore. Yeah. Church anymore. So this could be. This could that be. would be awesome. It you know, would. I have always loved the idea of a home church, so I am really. No, this would be I'm awesome. I'm really happy with this. So. And you know what? Not only uh, just brainstorming, but listen, Ashley sat right here on the couch uh, with a blanket on, and my dog's over here. Uh, she's used to this. She gets it, and she's just sleeping. Uh, and uh, not only we would open up our church, and I could still do this. So this is a but fun this idea. is life group, you guys. Huh. This really is what life group is. Is it's just in a home and it's comfy and it's warm. You can cozy on up. You can wear your pajama pants. Yeah. Your kids are here. They're safe. They're they're making friendships with other uh, Christian kids. So really, seriously, join us. You don't have to be a member of our church. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't you know you don't have to be this biblical theologist or theologian, whatever the word is. So come on and join us. So this was awesome. We're was so great. glad that we yeah. were able to do this. Literally, we're looking out our backyard and we can see our, the grass. So it was a big bummer to us. I was actually kind of angry this morning when I woke she up. What? And found out that she we had to me cancel. All up. I'm like, next time you need to take a woman's advice. We shouldn't have canceled. When the news says don't drive on the roads, drive anyways because <laughs> the news is always wrong. Yeah, the news is wrong, man. All right, uh, and, um, I love you. Thank you so much. I was especially bummed because we really need to be, be practicing with our kids for the Christmas program. So if you have a kid, you, I have sent you the playlist for our Christmas program. The songs are on YouTube. You can actually go, if, you, if I haven't sent them to you, to you, you can go to our um, church's YouTube page. Just type in South Omaha Church of God. I think there's a couple. One of them is actually my personal account. Don't go to that one. Um, go to the church one and I, we go to, then click playlists. There you can find the playlist of our Christmas program. And have your kid turn it on, maybe just as you're cleaning or going about your day and have the kids be practicing. There, you can also find uh, the last, we've only been doing this for two weeks, the last two weeks of our worship set list. So if you have particularly liked a certain day of worship, the songs that Jesse, oh look, Pastor Ronnie decides to hop on in right now. Dude, well, we're all done, Pastor. You've been, Dad, you've been sleeping, huh? You were out sledding, weren't you? No, you, Villagen, <laughs> are you guys a, Villagen has, Villagen. Villagen has spotty service. <laughs> So it's kind of hard, huh, Dad? All right. Well, it was so great to have you guys. So hold on. I want to bless you. This is a uh, this is a uh, a prayer that I want to get in the habit of saying. Is this my, what Michael Rowan shares? I don't know. Is I like it? what Michael Rowan shares from Numbers. Maybe. Listen. May the Lord bless yes, you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace this week. We love you. We'll see you love Wednesday. Love you guys. Bye bye. Have a great day.